Hey everybody, Michael Bear, Realtor with Bridgewell Real Estate Group and welcome back to the Bridgewell Vlog where I talk about all things real estate in the greater Vancouver and Fraser Valley real estate markets. Whether it's buyer tips or seller tips, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more super awesome content and information to help you guys make educated decisions. Um, today's video is all about bank appraisals versus real estate appraisals. It can obviously get a little bit confusing when they both use the term appraisal. So I did want to break down the difference uh, between a bank appraisal and a real estate appraisal, uh, general definitions and what you can expect. And then in this video, I also wanted to touch a little bit on frequently asked questions um, that come up. So usually it's like, when do lenders require an appraisal, um, a bank appraisal? Why do they require a bank appraisal? And what do I do if my bank appraisal comes in lower than my purchase price? Or what happens if an appraisal comes in low? Um, so starting off with basic definitions and understandings of a bank appraisal versus a real estate appraisal. Um, essentially, a bank appraisal is something that um, in you know more of a standard situation is going to happen during the subject removal process. So that period of time that the buyer has to do their due diligence on a property once they've got an accepted offer. And so um, the way that you can see an appraisal is essentially, you know, the the lender is going to lend you money to, um, you know, fund your purchase by form of a mortgage. And so they are essentially investing in this property with you. And so when they do that, they want to confirm and justify the amount that you are agreeing to purchase it for. And so a bank appraisal is really just there to justify the purchase price of a property for the lender. And so the lender is typically the one that hires a third party appraiser to come through. Um, this is often charged back to the buyer as a cost of, um, you know, obtaining the mortgage. And so that's something that you should always ask a mortgage broker is whether or not you should expect to pay that appraisal fee and whether or not you're going to need an appraisal. Um, most commonly, a third party appraiser is going to be hired if you are putting more than 20% down um, for a purchase that you need to fund via a mortgage. And so um, that is essentially the basics of a bank appraisal, whereas a real estate appraisal is a little bit different. It's done by a realtor and usually um, it is going to be a situation where either you are a seller and you are looking to get a market evaluation for your property and get an idea on what you could sell it for and at that time a realtor would also offer um, various listing strategies that align with your goals um, and often one that would um, make the most amount of profit because that's most sellers goals um, and on the flip side, it's also something that is done uh, by a buyer's agent. So again, a realtor um, would be there to assist you when you are purchasing a property to give you an estimate on what they feel um, and believe market value to be based on sales, the market condition, active properties, all of that. Um, so a real estate appraisal is done by a realtor. Um, it's a very in-depth process where, you know, we're taking into consideration layout, sales, as I said, active properties, market conditions, renovations. Um, you've usually seen the property in that sense. Um, and so it's a very comprehensive um, step when you are buying or selling a home. Um, so that's the difference between a bank appraisal and a real estate appraisal. A real estate appraisal, um, like, most of the time it's not going to cost any amount of money um, obviously when you are selling a property you're going to be paying commissions when you are buying a property that uh, buyer's agent or the realtor that's there to help you is being paid um, out of the gross commissions offered by the seller and so buyers don't pay realtor fees only sellers pay realtor fees um, but generally the process of getting an evaluation is a free service. And so that's what a real estate appraisal is, whereas a bank appraisal, um, typically costs anywhere between like 350 to $400, um, plus GST. And that's, um, 2021 prices, February, 2021 is what we're in right now. Um, so frequently asked questions regarding appraisals. Um, when do lenders require an appraisal? Going back to that, most of the time you're going to have a lender require a third party appraiser coming in um, if you are putting more than 20% down. Um, why do lenders require bank appraisal? Again, it's just basically to justify the amount that they are 
lending to you. Um, they want to justify the amount that you are purchasing that property for because they are essentially giving you that money um, and it can be seen as an investment on their front and so they want to be able to justify their investment and that's why banks will only lend on appraised value. Um, so this kind of leads to the next question is what do I do if my bank appraisal comes in lower than my purchase price and to understand this um, it you know, we have to understand that banks only lend on appraised value. So I've done a much more detailed um, explanation of this in another video, and I will definitely leave a link to it um, so that you guys can check it out. Um, and it essentially goes through um, the risks and uh, calculations of what happens if my bank appraisal comes in low. Um, but generally, um, the bank appraisal is going to be done during that subject removal process. And again, it's something that is a part of the subject to financing for the buyer. So assuming that you have a subject removal process and that your bank appraisal is done during that period of time, if an appraisal comes in lower than what you had agreed to purchase it for, you would still have the right to back out of that property because you're in that blanketed subject removal period. Um, where it becomes a little bit more complicated is when a property is being sold subject free. So you have no blanket period, you have no ability to back out, you've bought it and the appraisal um, has happened after the fact. And if the appraisal comes in lower than what you purchased it for, agreed to purchase it for, now all of a sudden you have a gap between appraised value and um, purchase price. And so because banks only lend on appraised value, you may need to make up the difference in terms of your down payment. And so this becomes a lot more risky to go subject free um, if you are in a situation where you've overpaid, um, specifically if your down payment is right on the cusp. Um, so for example, if you you know, or only putting 20% down and the property is over a million dollars and that's the minimum down payment that you have to put and you can't put, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 more because that's all you have, you're putting yourself in a really risky situation. Whereas if you have, you know, a 40% down and, you know, you need to make up that difference between your appraised value and your agreed upon purchase price in additional down payment funds, you're gonna be okay. You would plan to put 40% down in the first place. So, um, you know, if, if this is a little bit confusing, I find that this particular um, scenario always helps to be written out. And so that's why I did another video on it. So as I said, definitely check that out if you haven't already, just so that you can actually see uh, what happens and when it's more risky if your appraisal comes in low and you do go subject free. Um, but essentially, if your appraisal comes in low and you have not gone subject free and you have the subject removal process um, to back out um, or rely on, then, you know, maybe you can get a new appraisal. Um, you can make up the difference in the down payment. You can walk away from the deal or you can try and find a new lender that may kind of uh, see that appraised value a little bit differently. So you have options and that's why that subject removal period is there so that you can do your due diligence and it's your blanket period to be able to uh, make an educated decision, make sure that you can obtain financing and just be safe overall before you hand in that deposit and it's a done deal. Um, so I, I hope that that was all helpful for you. And at the end of the day, like how do you prevent a low bank appraisal is by getting a professional real estate appraisal. So, you know, realtors are there to help you do that in-depth analysis, to look at all those sales, to make sure that that value is justified. Um, and, you know, to have an appraisal come in low, a lot of the times that happens when somebody hasn't done their due diligence in terms of a proper real estate appraisal, getting a realtor to look at the sales and send it so that you can make an educated decision before you write the offer. Um, and so I, I think that that's really, really important if you are a buyer to have a professional buyer's agent that you know gives you access to that information and provides market analysis uh, analyses for you so that you can um, obviously prevent uh, a low appraisal from coming in because you know why you offered what you offered and you know that it's justified. So uh, essentially making sure that you don't overpay for a property. So I hope that this video was helpful for you guys and understanding the difference between bank appraisals and real estate appraisals. 
Yes, they're both appraisals, but they're there for different purposes. They're hired um, or ordered by different people. And, you know, maybe the process itself that a bank appraiser takes and a realtor takes are going to be slightly different. Um, and certainly a realtor uh, typically spends a little bit more time um, in the home, uh, whereas a bank appraiser um, is usually fairly quick and kind of in and out within five to ten minutes. And so um, if you have any questions about this at all, please feel free to reach out to me at any time. If you are looking for a real estate appraisal yourself, um, whether you're a seller looking for a listing market evaluation and recommendations on um, listing strategy to achieve your real estate goals or maximize your profit or both, uh, I'd be more than happy to provide you a, a listing competitive market analysis. And of course, if you are a buyer looking for a professional realtor to help you buy a place, guide you through that process and make sure that you're making an educated and empowered decision, I am definitely more than happy to help you. And with all of our buyers, anytime we're writing an offer, we're always putting together the sales and making sure that you're aware of what you're buying and why you've put um, that offer price on the contract and essentially coming up with a strategy for that as well based on every single situation. So um, if anybody's looking for a real estate appraisal, again, my name is Mariko Berg. I'm a realtor with Bridgewell Real Estate Group in the uh, Vancouver, Coquitlam, that kind of area, and uh, feel free to reach out to me anytime. So I hope that this video was helpful, guys. Um, let me know in the comments below if you have any other questions or videos that you want me to do, and I will definitely make sure to keep an eye out for that. So have a great day, um, and thanks so much for watching. Bye!